Uh, good morning and a very warm welcome to all the doctors and others uh, present here uh, for this special webinar of ours uh, on financial health check for doctors. Uh, thank you, Sanjay, for the introduction. Uh, so before we begin, I would like to just give you a brief, brief background about what I do at Right Horizons. Uh, so I'm a wealth manager. So I uh, help uh, clients uh, in their financial management and financial planning. Uh, my clients uh, are uh, based uh, out of um, Bangalore, uh, across India and uh, outside as well. So I deal with salaried professionals and other individuals and a few doctors as well. So let's get started. So what is the agenda of uh, today's uh, discussion? Uh, I'll just brief you. So we'll be looking at what is financial planning firstly? What makes financial planning for doctors different? And what are the challenges uh, that come in the path of financial planning? What are the parameters of ensuring a smooth and sound financial plan? How to diversify your assets and investments? How to beware of mis-selling? And finally, how to choose your financial advisor? And the last section we have is uh, question and answers. So this is broadly what I want to cover uh, today. If you have uh, anything which you want me to cover, you can put it in the chat box or the Q&A section and we'll take that up in, at the end of the session. So just uh, let's begin. So what is a financial plan? <clears throat> Basically, so most of the times a financial plan is misunderstood with an investment plan. Investment plan as in advice on which stock to buy, which share to buy, which mutual fund to buy, uh, that is an investment plan. So. Financial plan is a much more broader concept and an investment plan is a part of financial plan. So what is a financial plan? Financial plan is basically a process, a process of handholding your client through his financial journey, educating him of the various uh, financial parameters, financial products, and helping them streamline their savings and investments, helping them achieve their aspirations and goals and have a better uh, you know, control on all the finances. So the definition goes like this. It's a process of taking a comprehensive look at your current financial situation. Where do you stand today with respect to your financial situation? It, it is like a complete financial health check uh, uh, that comes to you uh, where you can take a bird's eye view also of uh, how your financial journey looks from now until your retirement and post-retirement as well. Okay. So... It also helps you organize uh, your finances. It's, as I said, it's a process. It starts by taking corrective measures to organize all your finances. There could be multiple loans. There could be multiple assets. So if something is not fitting right with your financial objectives and your financial plan, what is that corrective measures we need to take as per the financial planning come rules? So those corrective measures help you to organize your finances and have a, a holistic and a... a structured uh, approach to managing your finances. It also helps you in defining your financial goals. At the back of uh, our minds, we might be uh, having a certain idea of where we want to reach or what we want to do. But how do we define those goals? A financial planning helps us define the goals in a systematic and a smart way. So smart uh, defining the goals smartly is also one of the key objectives of creating a financial plan. It also outlines how your money, your investments and other assets help you in meeting your financial goals. We try to map your investments, assets, savings to the goals that are coming in line, short term, medium term and long term goals. And whether those are enough or what more uh, needs to be done uh, to help you uh, achieve uh, your financial goals. Lastly, but very importantly, it provides you a roadmap of how you should look at your financial journey. Finance is an important aspect of any individual, any business. Uh, you, you, you name it, finance is the lifeblood of everything. So having a proper roadmap helps you achieve a smoother uh, uh, financial life. So that is a financial plan. Now, what makes financial planning different for doctors? Why are we having this topic today for doctors? Acquiring a doctor's degree is uh, years of hard work. Firstly, you spend about five years to achieve your bachelor's degree. 
then in today's scenario that's not enough so you go on to do your masters which is your md which is again a two to three years a process and then you go take up your specializations uh, into various fields you work with some senior doctors to gain that hands on experience and expertise you know it's a prolonged process and very very hard work right so what makes it different all these uh, you know affect the economic cycle of a doctor so a doctor's economic cycle is very different from the rest of the world firstly long period of education so your non medical classmates would have you know started their jobs uh, much more earlier than you do so the, the the period of education delays your you know starting of a proper career or income source so your proper regular earnings start only after 28 to 30 years of course once it starts there is no looking back sky is the limit but yes there is a delay in that regular income coming in then doctors also have an advantage that you can continue your practice as long as you want for others it's like they have a defined retirement age 60 or 65 years and uh, you know but doctors can continue if uh, everything is fine if, if they are able to health wise you know mentally and physically if they are able to take up then they can practice as long as they want so all these parameters makes it very very different uh, for uh, different for doctors so hence it is important to have a focused and a customized uh, approach to managing the finances that is why you know uh, we feel it is a little different for doctors uh it is a little challenging and a lot of focus is required doctors also deal with some dynamics in their financial journey in their career uh, in their life okay so what are those they would want to you would want to uh, either uh, set up your own clinic or work with a hospital or sometimes you decide to do both uh, somewhere down the line you would also aspire to have a hospital of your own which means you want to you know get into business which is entirely a different ball game so these are some of the dynamics which come into your profession and into your professional life which affect uh, you know your finances because then uh, these become your priority and the focus is mainly on you know organizing uh, 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 your uh, career or your uh, career progression to try and uh, look at where you fit in what exactly uh, you want to do uh, and things like that that is where a financial plan will help you organize all of this and look at it from a uh, more holistic uh, uh, and, a, and a streamlined way right so uh, during this journey you know you come across a lot of challenges like you know what are those firstly the late start of income right secondly once you start earning uh, you would have taken a hefty education loans or your parents would have you know uh, given out of their retirement fund there could be a multiple scenarios so paying off your education loan becomes your first priority as soon as you see that uh, an income stream is coming in so that is one of the challenge uh, cash flow management once uh, you know income start then there are multiple sources of income how to channelize them you know how to ensure a, a proper cash flow management how much is coming in how much is going out what is what can be saved how it can be saved so cash flow management becomes a, a challenge which can be addressed through a financial plan right uh, unclear goals planning like that like you say you know you might uh, be wanting to you know start your own hospital plan for children abroad education uh, have a house have a luxury car or, or any of that how do you have a clear goal for each of these and how do you ensure that each one is being achieved from time to time right so uh, these are the uh, challenges increase tax liability with increase income there comes a increase tax liability how do you deal with efficient tax planning so that is a challenge less time to manage finances as we all know you are in this noble profession uh, you know helping uh, uh, others lives right so you have very less time to dedicate to proper financial uh, planning so all of this you know uh, time is the one which you know affects all of these challenges as well postponement so uh, because you don't have uh, uh, enough time to look at each and everything of your finances and investments uh, so there, there 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 is a delay of course this delay is also because you are you know in your journey you are also trying to uh, you know figure out 
uh, what you need to do ultimately, whether work for a hospital, um, uh, you know, uh, whether set up your own clinic or do both or what exactly is it, where work in India, work abroad, uh, take up certain certifications, upskilling yourself, uh, it could be any number of things. So then financial planning, you know, takes a backseat for you because that becomes the last priority. All of these take a priority for you because these matter a lot for your career, right? So that is that. Then uh, minimal financial knowledge. Our education system is such that there is, for doctors, there is a very minimal orientation towards financial literacy or, you know, financial management concepts as such. So the, uh, I wouldn't say lack of financial knowledge, minimal financial knowledge and exposure also contribute to uh, some of the challenges. Missing on long-term perspective. So because of lack of time, because of the hectic schedule, uh, the approach is quite different. So something, uh, you know, for example, let's say uh, you want to do for something for tax planning in the month of March, uh, might be you end up doing an ALSS lump sum. So there is no enough time for, you know, uh, doing the research, whether that is, a, whether that can be mapped to my goal, some goal in the future. Uh, three years is the lock-in period for ELSS uh, schemes, equity link savings schemes. These are tax savings scheme, schemes, right? So, so the long-term perspective is somewhere getting mi uh, missed and a lot of things get mixed up during this uh, phase. Not mapping investment to goals. So randomly, uh, we would have done because of lack of financial knowledge or because of lack of time, uh, with something that is coming to you quickly, and, uh, you know, or something that... Uh, somebody has approached you uh, which which looks good to you you would have done that randomly but you don't know whether that can be mapped you know to investments and how efficiently that can be utilized for your goals uh, and things like that expectation of a quick solution because the time has been uh, passing and there is already a delay there is an expectation of achieving things quickly over concentration in one asset class over concentration could be uh, accumulating in a lot of FTs, in a lot of LIC policies, in a lot of real estate. Again, because of lack of time, something is better than nothing. So you would just want to park money there. So that uh, creates a challenge of over-concentration risk. And how do we deal, that, deal with that? So these are some of the financial challenges. Now, now we know that what is a financial plan and what are the challenges as doctors and medical professions uh, we face. Here I would like to put this question in front of you, what is your protocol when a patient comes to you? Right? What you do is, you follow the rules that you have learned in your profession. What is it? You first diagnose, you do a physical examination, then you uh, uh, pass through some tests, uh, the patient, uh, you pass the patient through some tests to understand what is the problem, to evaluate the situation, and then prescribe appropriate medication or uh, surgery or therapy whatever the uh, it could be. So a person who is very, very serious about his or her health will follow these rules and approach a doctor and go step by step in you know, solving the issue, uh, health condition or uh, anything, right? So there are certain set of people uh, who do some Google research, uh, who do some YouTube research for medicines, uh, or they could just end up going to pharmacist and buying over-the-counter medication. So all of this might give temporary solutions, temporary relief, but they do not understand the uh, consequences, the long-term consequences that might build up or cultivate uh, down the line, right? So similarly, why do doctors need a financial plan? The way you diagnose a patient's health, the same way we have to diagnose your financial health also. And how do we do that? We do that through a financial plan. Most of the times what happens is we have a lot of access and exposure these days to uh, some portals and apps, okay, where you get to see some, uh, some uh, information or you would say some uh, recommendations or suggestions. This stock is good to buy at this time. This uh, insurance is good to buy at this time. This mutual fund is, you know, have very, very hot selling. So all these are like the over-the-counter medicines. Of course, they are giving you a short-term remedy. You have some cash in hand, you want to deploy it. So these are the short-term memories. But where is the long-term approach, right? We are missing out on that. What are the consequences if you end up putting your money in some something which is not suitable to your risk appetite, which is not suitable to your financial objectives, 
so what what could be the consequences if that is not done right in the first time right so that is why a financial plan will help you evaluate all of these take some corrective measures of whatever you have you know invested in and look at a, a long term perspective uh, in financial plan there is a, a concept of cash flow analysis in the cash flow analysis we do a thorough analysis of your cash flows from uh, uh, right from now until your life expectancy uh, pre retirement and post retirement period how your cash flows are where are we going which year are the goals coming in so how do you ensure that you know our uh, investments and capital is effectively utilized at the time of the need uh, so all of this gives a very good picture of uh, where you stand today what you need to do uh, what will happen if you you are taking the suggestion that the advisor is giving you how how beneficial is it or is it not so all of this can be evaluated with the help of a financial plan what are the elements of a good financial plan so now we understand that you know financial plan is a process it helps us identify uh, a lot of things but what is what are the main elements of a financial plan this uh, you know uh, this image here uh, can help us understand you know exactly how it starts first thing is we establish a relationship with the client and advisor relationship uh we discuss uh what are the service deliveries and you know how, how how to go ahead basically and then there comes the stage of confidential information gathering so for creating a financial plan we need a lot of data from your side data pertaining to incomes expenses what comes in what goes out um, what are the savings current savings that are being done what are the financial goals all sort of information what are your assets and liabilities all of that and of course uh, it is kept very very confidential then analyze and evaluate all the data that has been shared develop personalized strategies based on the evaluations implement solutions what are the solutions short term and long term solutions medium term solutions uh, you know uh, my, my, um, then once the plan is there once you have the road map how do we execute that after execution there needs to be continuous monitoring of the progress and what corrective measures need to be taken and from time to time the financial plan needs to be updated as well some economic uh, changes would have happened which will impact the entire plan then we have to plug in those elements into the financial plan to see whether we are in line uh, with the plan or whether these changes are impacting the financial plan entirely then the entire plan changes then from there a new you know a road map uh, is set so that is broadly it what it entails is uh, it entails reviewing your insurance also how well you are covered with your life health and you know indemnity insurance portfolio management like i was saying uh, having the proper mix of assets equity debt fds real estate gold how much of each of it will uh, make sense in your portfolio for you as an individual for you for your family for your goals you know having that entire portfolio managed scientifically and research backed sometimes there is a trust administration also uh, sometimes there are situations where there are specially abled uh, children for whom some trusts are done that is one example i am giving but there could be a scenario where the trust is required trust planning is done there is efficient tax planning also to channelize the expenses investments uh, incomes right uh, in a tax efficient way cash flow analysis like i was saying we build a cash flow uh, from now until your retirement age estate planning uh, what assets and what decisions you are taking today how that can be passed to your future generations how all of this can be structured in a more scientific and better way in a focused approach right so it is it has uh, income and expense analysis cash flow management what comes in what goes out Uh, uh how that can be um, uh, converted into effective savings savings again get converted into investments which are long term sustainable what are your assets what currently you have uh, resources and what are what loans you have you might uh, you know uh, there could be one home loan one personal loan car loan uh, there could be multiple personal loans credit card loans how to you know manage all of this debt management is an important aspect once the debt is managed efficiently the whole financial plan will look smooth this will uh, de stress you of uh, from the uh, debt defining financial goals 
mapping assets to specific goals we call it as a bucketing strategy identifying the goal gaps what are the goal gaps and how to uh, bridge these goal goal gaps uh, with a efficient roadmap so these are the elements of financial plan now there is a poll question uh, sanjay can you please run the poll so now we know that uh, what is a financial plan why is a doctor's financial plan very different and how to what are the challenges and how to go about it how we can have a uh, focused approach so here let us see what are your financial goals and aspirations we have given multiple choice uh, questions you can select more than one yeah i have shared the results okay so yeah we have the results so as we can see most of us most of us want to take care of uh, you know we want to be financially independent by a certain age financial freedom financial independence is of high priority and the next priority is planning for children's education abroad so so uh, basically i was trying to i, I will take one uh, one of the goals of financial independence so once you have a good financial plan so what is a good financial plan let me tell you that first so a good financial plan is the one which will help you have a look or have a view of your financial situation in the worst case scenario so here what we should ideally do is have a very conservative financial plan to see in the worst cases uh, how how well is your financial plan your financial journey able to absorb the ups and downs in your uh, in your goals planning right so what we do here is we take a little bit of higher inflation rate we take moderate returns on investments and we try and see even with the moderate returns is your plan achievable is your plan feasible and sustainable so this will help you ensure that whatever over and above this you are able to achieve with the right set of asset allocation with the right proper uh, you know investment mapping to goals uh, all of this all of your uh, top priority goals if they are taken care for example children's education your housing loan is taken care your uh, expenses are you know uh, uh, streamlined budget is there you know what you have to do your savings are taken care in and channelized into proper investments all of this if it is systematically taken care then of course you will have the focus to look beyond look beyond in the sense all of you have you know so many of you have mentioned that you want to retire by a certain age how do you ensure that you ensure that by uh, having a backup plan what is that backup plan is ensuring a passive income for yourself where after a certain age let's say 55 at 50 by 55 if you are able to ensure that a certain stream of income uh, passive income is coming in without any of your effort which can take care at least 50% of your expenses then that's enough for you to think of financial independence beyond that point working or not working should be a matter of choice rather than a matter of compulsion for you beyond retiring doesn't mean you know completely retiring retiring what generally these days uh, as a trend means is by a certain age ensure that you have you are enough secure financially all your top priority goals are taken care your children education is safe you have risk covered for your family so there's absolutely no worries there then after that you look beyond like you know uh, have a passive income then get into something that you like doing more well, some doctors might be interested in photography music they want to do something uh, different after a certain age they want to enjoy life differently so there is scope and uh, buffer to do that to ensure to all of that so financial plan is a very very uh, structured way of looking at all of these and ensuring that it is achievable so thank you very much for those answers i hope um, i hope it was uh, good to you know uh, think about uh, all these parameters um, now we have discussed about savings investments having a financial plan so how are the financial goals met is basically through investments and i was saying asset allocation scientific approach so what is that basically how do we ensure the proper mix of assets uh, for an individual so how do we determine that so there are some lessons from cricket that we can relate to investments and this video will help you um, with that one second yeah 
In a multilingual country like India, cricket is a common language 1.3 billion people speak. But do you know, this most revealed sport in India has many similarities with investments. Let us have a look. Can you imagine a team of only batsmen? Never, right? We need a perfect blend of batsmen, bowlers and fielders to win the match. Similarly, to succeed in the game of investment, diversification is the only winning strategy. Just like a balanced team, we need a balanced portfolio to give us better returns. We can't hit the boundary on every delivery. Singles are just as important as boundaries. Similarly, we should invest in debt and equity. Equity provides us high returns when the market is good. And debt provides us consistent returns when the market is tight. Interesting, isn't it? Based on time, there are three different formats of cricket. And we select players based on their track record for each format. Similarly, we have different investment horizons. Whether short or long term, we must select funds according to our goals only. Lastly, just like a captain is necessary to lead the team, similarly, we should have a professional to lead and guide us throughout the game to ensure the suitability of products we buy. So, we hope you will play this game of investment pretty well now and win the World Cup of your dreams. For more information, kindly contact. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risk. Read all. So, like that. So, hope uh, this uh, video In a multilingual country sorry. like India, cricket is a... Yeah, sorry about that. So, uh, so what we are talking about here is diversification. Ensuring a, a holistic approach to uh, asset allocation and diversification is all that matters. So, uh, uh, because of lack of time, because of, uh, you know, minimal financial knowledge, uh, uh, you would take, you would, you should, you should have a financial advisor who will help and assist you in making those decisions for, for you, right? So, diversification is very, very important when you have to plan for goals, channelize your investments. So, what is diversification and how it can be ensured? So basically, we, are, we have to buy the assets at reasonable prices, stay invested over the long term, book profits from time to time so that you're realizing the profits and reinvesting, you know, for better returns. So these are some of the points that I have collated, which will, you know, simplify. So when a good real estate property is available, buy one. So real estate does not necessarily mean a flat uh, or a you know built up property. So built up properties are depreciating assets. Over a period of time, they will need a lot of maintenance, uh, you know, out of pocket expenses. And as doctors, doctors and medical professionals, you wouldn't have that much of a time to dedicate to managing these real estate properties. If any, if you want to consider a real estate property, a land is a good one. Uh, a land in a good uh, layout, which has a uh, good development facilities. You know, investing in a good piece of land at a reasonable price is not a good idea. And how much of a real estate one has to do? Not more than 5 or 10% of your entire portfolio. Now, this real estate we are talking about here is the surplus real estate, not your, uh, you know, uh, residential property. Apart from your residential property, apart from the property that you are using for your clinic or, you know, hospital, apart from that, if you are looking at it from an investment perspective, uh, better than built-up properties, land is a good idea. Built-up properties, you would argue that there is rental income. Yes, of course, there is rental income, but rental incomes are again taxable as per your income tax slabs. Correct? So, and how much is the rental yield? Every year, what is it? Uh, how much percentage of hike that you're going to do in your rental income? Hardly, you know, 3 to 4%. Year on year, uh, there could be very less chance of increasing the rent. Right. So when you compute the after tax uh, rental yield, it is very, very low, even worse than FDs sometimes. When gold is available at a nice rate, buy it. So when equity markets are doing good, gold usually doesn't perform much or is at a stable rate. But when equity markets are down, gold you know, rises. So when is a good time to buy a gold? Is uh, when it is when the rates are going down, buy some and accumulate some. And how much of a gold should be in your portfolio? Again, not more than five percent of your entire asset class. Mutual funds. One can keep accumulating every month to SIPs. Why are we recommending mutual funds here? Because of the minimal risk and active management of mutual funds. 
you are getting exposure to uh, good quality stocks through a fund which is actively managed by a uh, professional wealth uh, fund manager so uh, you are you know shifting your uh, risk and your uh, headache of choosing the funds to the manager right so he will be there to ensure that uh, you know the movements are done within the fund the profits are booked and your you know fund is performing so how can you ensure uh, having exposure to mutual fund the best route is sip every month from your uh, account you set up sips in the beginning of the month so it, it it acts like a silent accumulation of the fund at the back right you don't you wouldn't even realize after 4 years 5 years 10 years how much it would have been accumulated at the same time a financial advisor will also ensure that from time to time based on the economic changes based on the market conditions what changes need to be made in your mutual fund portfolio uh, equity exposure should be reduced that that exposure should be increased uh, during some mark, some you know economic cycles uh, when is a good time to book profits all of that can be managed efficiently by a uh, good professional financial advisor when market is volatile we always say do not do anything let your portfolio as it is maintain uh, you know uh, if you have surplus cash maintain it in liquid why so that when the opportunity is right you can deploy in the right type of asset class maintain liquidity for rainy day ensuring uh, diversification not necessarily means going ahead and investing everything in different asset classes you also have to make provisions for your contingencies and emergencies we always say that uh, as well, you know we should have at least 6 months of expenses plus emis set aside as an emergency fund in a very very liquid um, uh, asset asset class it is always best to have it uh, in a savings account but if your um, if your requirement is uh, emergency fund requirement is coming to about 10 15 lakhs from uh, you know 10 15 lakhs then it is better to make a split about 5 to 6 lakhs you can you know keep it in your bank account savings account rest you can keep it in a liquid mutual fund or any other liquid fd flex like fd or anything like that during a stock market crash invest in some good quality stocks uh, ensuring that uh, the company that you know you are buying the stock is fundamentally strong which has good growth prospectives over the long term horizon or whenever your bulls are coming in maybe 5 years 7 years 10 years down the line it should have good growth prospects the company's book should look attractive and fundamentally strong so ensuring these right kind of uh, assets is the crux ultimately what we are trying to say here is accumulation is an important phase of one's financial journey and how do you ensure a good accumulation is uh, having assets at the reasonable prices at good prices so that when profits are there uh you can see a good xir or you can see a good growth rate on your return on your uh, portfolio so accumulating different asset classes at reasonable prices will ensure uh, your investment management in a like a smooth progression you deliberately don't have to take those actions but ensure that over a period of time cost averaging is taken care uh, reasonable uh, you know a reasonable pricing is ensured So now, how do you ensure you have the right financial products? So, most of the times, there is a concept called as mis-selling, right? So, what is mis-selling? Giving wrong information, giving unrealistic information about the product, uh, giving a very rosy picture. You will get fifteen percent return, twenty percent year-on-year returns. You know those kind of taglines you should be aware of. Okay, sometimes these are based on very very. Uh, uh, past uh, previous records or uh, very superficial uh, numbers and things like that sometimes uh, when when the uh, products are hard sold full information of the product is not revealed selling or pitching and aggressively pitching of the product even if it does not suit the requirements first of all your requirements are not assessed only when you know when uh, when a person is trying to sell you something right so how to avoid being a victim of uh, mis selling how to ensure that you are not mis sold a product you have to follow these simple steps first thing is keep the greed aside 15% 20% year on year return might look very attractive but don't look at it from that perspective look at it try to look at any any approach uh, in a negative way right never buy a product that is pitched aggressively 
you have to look at a product that is pitched aggressively in the worst case scenario in the worst case scenario what is this product going to do how is it going to help me what are the uh, points i should know if something goes wrong if something goes wrong if something goes wrong that should be your time uh, tagline when assessing a product that is pitched aggressively never try a product that you do not understand very very important if you don't understand the dynamics of how this product works how are they ensuring these returns how are they ensuring the cash flows out of this product if you don't understand that better stay away never buy a product which does not have purpose for you which does not serve your financial objectives as simple as that if there is a insurance policy uh, you it is you know it is a 10 year product after 10 years it will mature but in the 10th year you do not have any goal coming in that year and the returns are you know superficial or post tax the expectation is something else so you have to find the right purpose of where you are investing you have to ask lot of questions you know like what are the risks is there a lock in period if there is a lock in period you know you should be really really aware because you are locking in the liquidity there right what are the exit options if you want to exit out of that product are there penalties are there charges uh, what options do you have as an investor you should have flexibility uh, you know to exit whenever possible with minimal exit uh, 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 what do you say uh, exit repercussions or consequences and what are the charges hidden charges all of that so you basically you have to do a lot of research uh, before getting into any product avoid last minute investments like you know uh, for tax planning like i was mentioning uh, in the month of march you just end up doing the lump sum investment avoid those last minute investments as much as possible and lastly uh, if you are if you if something after all this if, if you feel that something is fitting in right and you should give it a try take a second opinion from a financial advisor we call ourselves financial advisors as financial doctors right so you can go to a financial advisor to take a opinion right so we have seen all of this so because of all of these challenges because of lack of time uh, because of lack of financial knowledge basically doctors do not have time to get into such details that is why a financial advisor is a good is a is a good idea to have uh, you know to help you manage with all your finances now how how does a financial advisor ensure a smooth financial plan or how do you how should you look at it to ensure the financial plan is taken care in a smooth way first thing is create a budget and stick to it a budget is very important right spending uh, spend, spending randomly on a very very luxury uh, location uh, vacation and you know uh, spending on a, a very luxury car uh, in in a city like bangalore a luxury car going at a you know there is so much of traffic you don't really enjoy you enjoy only when you go on long drive so there is a timing and there is a budget for everything so if you stick to that budget and timing things are half done if both husband and wife are doctors there is you know the both the incomes are coming in there are multiple sources of income how do you ensure that you have uh, you know a structured way of dealing with finances what you should do is one well, once exp- once salary should be salary or income should be effectively used for only expenses the other person's salary the husband's salary or wife's salary should be used only for expenses and the other person's should be used for savings so one uh, income is taking care of all the expenses including emis the other uh, income is taking care of savings aspect also so simultaneously basically you should not mix professional and personal uh, expenses together uh, have a budget Uh, which can uh, structure it in a proper way and uh, like i was saying having an emergency fund a contingency fund is very important ensure proper risk cover you should as doctors you should always have life insurance that is i'm talking about pure term insurance which covers the risk for your family if something happens to you uh, your family should be able to take care of the major goals that are coming with like you uh, know uh, survival living expenses uh, children's education and all of that so basically you have to cover your family medical insurance medical expenses uh, uh, are very uncertain so to maintain this uncertainty to ensure that your other savings are not affected because of uh, you know uh, unexpected uh, medical conditions so you should have a medical uh, insurance uh, a floater plan uh, is 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 very good idea 
professional indemnity insurance also is very important uh, for doctors uh, which will take care of all the basically these uh, ensuring these insurances are there and how much of it uh, is adequate for you for your lifestyle for your family is very important ensuring the proper cover is very important avoid over concentration like i was saying in any asset class build wealth for significant milestones look at what is short term medium term and long term requirement what are the timelines which year exactly might be might not be exact year or something but at least around that time you should ensure you know some you know wealth is built for that particular goal have a fitness regime of course doctors have a very very hectic and busy schedule so in spite of that many doctors have uh, you know maintain their health very uh, nicely uh, it's very good to see them uh, that is important actually so even if you have a very hectic schedule ensure that you get into a fitness regime because if you are fit and healthy a financial plan is also taken care because then if uh, you know if something goes wrong then the entire uh, planning gets uh, disturbed then the focus shifts to you know to maintaining your health so to ensure smooth uh, healthy see, see the objective of financial plan and financial independence is to be able to enjoy it right so having a fitness regime will help you enjoy whatever you are earning and uh, making way for today so you have a very uh, hard uh, life uh, it is not easy to deal a doctor's life you should also keep rewarding yourself from time to time go on those vacations in between with family spend time in time for yourself you know make way make provisions to reward yourself reward your hard work invest in a good financial doctor because of the lack of time uh, you know finances take a back seat please uh, find a proper uh, you know uh, a trusted financial partner for you who can take care of your finances at least one aspect of your journey is taken care in a smoother way where you are depending and ensuring a uh, smooth achievability give ample time to your savings and investments to grow so uh, so uh, it's like you know nurturing a tree when you plant a sapling you need to nurture it with manure give water give time sunlight so investments are also like that investments and savings are also like that once you start it might look very small and uh, you, you, know, you might not see that kind of a returns but over a period of time it has it gives the power of compounding right so it compounds it uh, multiplies and uh, giving time your portfolio the economic cycles will come into the play everything comes into the play and then you can you know giving a lot of time giving a longer perspective will give uh, give, give you a good feeling of you know Uh, enjoying those returns so you should give proper time to your savings lastly we are going to see how to choose your advisor now you now i have mentioned that having an advisor will be really helpful to you because of all these challenges that you have you know in front of you ahead of you so how do you choose your financial advisor first thing is check the credentials of the financial advisor you should be aware of the credentials like cfp a charter uh, certified financial planner right uh, cwm chartered wealth manager cfa chartered financial analyst and sebi certified investment advisor these are these are the some of the credentials which are uh, sebi mandated uh, sebi certified and uh, largely accepted by sebi as proper financial uh, partners right so you should look for these financial uh, credentials and qualifications uh, of your advisor check if they have proper systems and processes in place uh, which can ensure a seamless uh, uh, seamless process for you the documentation is taken place uh, uh, you know it is not dealt with in a haphazard way there are proper systems email uh, you know uh, uh, communications you are being communicated effectively there is a process uh, you have a, a point of contact initially but then if that a person he or she is not reachable is the manager reachable what are the systems if you want to escalate who is it who is the person so all of these systems and processes if you want to invest your money what is the process if you want to take out your money what is the process if you want to uh, approve a financial plan or a investment plan what is the process so ensure that there are systems and processes and checks at least so look for experience also the more the experience the better is the advice 
check if they have strong research so how are they advising you to buy a certain stock how are they advising you to buy a certain product do, do they have a research wing do they have a research department on what uh, basis are they doing their research even though you don't understand all of it it is good to ask these questions and uh, see what kind of a response you get at least you know something is there uh, to look at when you need it check the fee structure at the last okay uh, some advisors might charge uh, a certain percentage or they might be charging less even you know what is it that you are getting for that payment basically you know right the quality of advice matters a lot go go and look in their website for some testimonials feedbacks uh, you know something like that what is the fee structure why others are charging less why you are charging more so what is that extra benefit that i am going to get is it worth it so do do, do that kind of a background check fix up a meeting to discuss and then do a reference check if your colleagues your other doctors are referring you to any advisor that will be a best option to go for because they are tried and tested advisors and uh, that will ensure all of these points will ensure that you are in safe hands with respect to your money so this is how you have to plan and choose your advisor so hope uh, the session was uh, good and i have covered most of the points let's take the q and a Uh, but before that, I will just want to brief like what Right Horizons is about. Uh, we are a SEBI certified investment advisory uh, company headquartered in Bangalore. We have four branches in Mumbai, Chennai, Hyderabad, and Bangalore. Uh, we provide uh, services ranging from investment advisory, wealth management, financial planning, insurance, real estate, and we also have PMS that is portfolio management services. So we manage more than two thousand crores of AUM. We are a fifty plus uh, employees company, and we have been into the business since last eighteen nineteen years. So this is a brief timeline uh, of where we started. We started in two thousand three. Uh, the company was founded by Mr. Anil Rego. In two thousand seven, we expanded our branches to uh, two more places, Chennai and Hyderabad. In twenty twelve, we acquired our SEBI advisory license and PMS license. In 2016, uh, we reached a thousand plus crores of AUM and 350 plus crores of PMS, uh, you know, assets under management. That is a that was a very big milestone in 2016. In 2019, we also ventured and started family office with 15 accounts, with more than 15 accounts, having more than 10 crores of AUM. Family office is a different branch of uh, you know wealth management. Uh, international uh, uh, international funds. We started advising around 2020 and started including in the portfolios. Uh, in 2021, we started some new business models and transformation, and here we are uh, uh, during this journey. So that's about us. These are some uh, uh, some of the uh, categories of advice that we uh, uh, deal in: NRI investment services, wealth management, financial advisory. portfolio management services like i was saying right uh, financial education we we conduct uh, programs webinars from time to time corporate programs and sessions to you know uh, create financial awareness and financial literacy we also do corporate advisory so that's about us so we are open to questions thank you ma'am um, um, i would like to Just uh, you know, but if you are having any queries and questions, you can type it in Q and A section. I uh, will be reading out and no one will uh, answer the queries. I think we are already already having one question. Uh, like, uh, are built up property depreciating asset? Yes, built up properties are depreciating assets. Uh, they are they look good for up to eight to ten years. After that, you know, a lot of issues crop up and a lot of time and effort goes in time, effort and money goes into maintaining uh, the properties. so when we talk about investment in real estate uh, going for built up property uh, should not be considered uh, land is always appreciating even if it is appreciating at a slower rate uh, it's fine but land always appreciates and there is less maintenance the only thing that you have to take care of is there is no encroachment and your taxes uh, property taxes are paid there. apart from that uh, you know it's a good idea to have a real estate but again like i was saying not uh, too much But uh, just five to eight percent of your entire portfolio you can have in real estate. Uh, thank you, ma'am. We have one question from Mr. Nagesh. How is taxed? Uh, taxed if I'm holding two residence properties on my own? Sorry, uh, can you repeat that? How it's taxed if I'm holding uh, two residence properties on my own? 
Okay, so this need a this needs a little elaboration. Uh, actually, uh, uh, Sanjay, what we'll do is we'll email the response to this because of uh, you know time constraint. I won't be able to explain it in a proper, a proper way. So we'll revert to it uh, by email. Sure, that we can do. Yeah. And also, one more question is there: Does it require the retirement plan focusing only on expertise and experience? That is the query. Which uh retirement planning can you please repeat it a little slowly does it requires retirement plan focusing only on expertise and experience expertise think, and experience i think it was a query which mr nares asked if it's available we can ask him to you know allow to we can allow him to talk and uh, yeah yeah sure sure yeah i didn't quite get that yeah mr nares you can uh, you know elaborate a little So now let us move to next question. If uh, okay, uh, we'll get back, we'll get back to that. Yeah, yeah sure. Can NCFM certified person can be deemed as good credential for you know uh, being okay. treated as a good advisor? Yeah. So NCFM uh, has uh, you know uh, has diverted the certification programs to NISM National Institute of uh, for Securities Markets. So now NISM is conducting all the credentials. So to be a certified financial advisor, there is uh, there are a lot of modules actually. The specific module that uh, ensures certified investment advisor is NISM XA and XB. So these are two levels of exam. Both the levels have to be uh, uh, cleared, and every year uh, the certificate needs to be validated. Uh, and after three years, after every three years, the examination has to be retaken. So ensuring the validity of this certification is also important. Please remember the name of the certification for the certified investment advisor. It is NISM XA and XB. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, uh, like what, what proportion in each asset class, the uh, stocks, mutual fund, and others? Yeah, again, so we cannot uh, uh, you know, answer this in a straightforward way because there is no standard approach. So we have to discuss your risk profile. Uh, your age, uh, your goals, your financial dependency, uh, your, your family's financial dependency on you and a lot of other things to come up with a proper mix of asset allocation, equity, debt and uh, stocks and you know, real estate and things like that. Uh, so, but broadly what, uh, you know, uh, there are some thumb rules, I'll just brief uh, about that, but the best way is to approach an advisor and have a proper assessment of this mix because this mix is the one which will ensure long-term sustainability of your financial plan. So basically what uh, we suggest as a thumb rule is look at it in this way. If you are a uh, 40, uh, 40 years old uh, person, then 40% uh, uh, should be in uh, uh, debt and 60% should be in equity. So, so based on your age, so that is it, but uh, that needs a, a much more scientific approach. This is just on a broader level. Uh -huh. Yes, Sanjay, we can go to the next one. Yeah. So the next question is, is NPS is a good scheme for retirement? Uh, yes, NPS is also a good option, especially if you don't have an uh, EPF. Okay, But how much of it uh, needs to go into NPS matters a lot because NPS has uh, certain um, restrictions at the end, at the age of 60, 65. Uh, uh, only some portion of it uh, you can withdraw as uh, tax exempt. The rest you have to leave it with the fund to uh, get pension. So there has to be a calculation of how much contribution is uh, good for you as a family, as a person. And then accordingly, uh, we have to uh, look at it. So that, that again becomes one of the asset class, not uh, entirely. Uh, we cannot look at it entirely uh, to fund retirement. Yeah. 